Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, we'll be starting our last session of the morning now um, with um, Suzanne. Yeah, and I also have Sean here. Um, so we'll both be presenting. Um, yeah, great to have everybody here. Um, and the first, the, 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 the previous session uh, really leads nicely into this one because we're talking about also um, creating impact and marketing Drupal. Um, and uh, specifically, uh, the Promote Drupal initiative was started because we're all really good at talking about Drupal in our community. You know, we come to DrupalCon, we go to our Drupal camps, um, we chat about Drupal on Slack and Drupal.org, um, and a lot of us know, you know, lots of people in the community, we've been using it for years, and there's this need to break outside of that. Um, who here works at a Drupal agency? Probably mm, a lot of you. Yeah. Um, and how many of you work for agencies that do marketing? You have somebody who does some marketing. You've created a video, you've you know, posted on LinkedIn, <laughs> you've done some kind of marketing activity. Yeah, and some of us have done a lot of it. I know at our uh, agency, we uh, have spent a, a lot of time, invested a lot over the years. Um, and yet Drupal itself doesn't have that marketing team. And so that's why we're here today is to kind of talk about that missing piece of the puzzle. Uh, oh yeah, introductions. <laughs> My name's Suzanne Dergacheva, for those who haven't met me. Um, I've been the one walking around with a baby, so if you don't recognize me, uh, this is me without the baby. Um, and I'm the Dr Promote Drupal Initiative lead. I'm also the, a co-founder and Drupal practice lead at Evolving Web and uh, have been doing that for, for 15 years. I spent a lot of time training people, which means I've talked to tons of people who are brand new to Drupal and kind of gathered their first impressions. And some of those people are decision makers trying to, to figure out, is Drupal the right fit for my project or do I wanna go with some other product? Um, and this is where a lot of my motivation for being involved with Promote Drupal comes from. Um, Sean, do you also, do you want to introduce yourself now or? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah? Can do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So um, first, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, what this initiative is, why it exists. For those of you who haven't heard of Promote Drupal or it's been a while, um, really our goal is to increase adoption of Drupal, you know, increase the number of Drupal sites out there. Some of us have seen those, uh, those graphs where we see, oh, Drupal uptake is, is falling off, um, how do we interpret that? Um, and we might be concerned about fewer uh, Drupal sites out there. And so Promote Drupal is here to ad address that and really, um, and really be that marketing team that's missing. Um, and specifically, really, and I have to repeat this again and again, to create marketing materials and marketing resources and just that, that impact and that journey for external users. So. How many of you have been to Drupal.org in the last week? We're at DrupalCon, so probably a lot of you. <laughs> um, yeah, are, do you think that you are the primary users of Drupal.org? Like, who feels like, yeah, I go to Drupal.org and it serves my needs? Yeah, a lot, I mean, a lot of content there is for people in the community, right? We see the events page, we see information about how to contribute, we see content about modules, and we go there to get information from the issue queues. Um, but if you go there and you put on your glasses of like, I'm new to Drupal, there's not so much there, or it's harder to find, and um, the messaging isn't all you know, targeted at, at that audience. So, th so that's part of what we're trying to solve here. So I'll go um, just to, to give you a bit of background on the work that we've already done. So I know sometimes we just like to talk about the new things we've been working on, but this initiative has been around for long enough that we've um, done some research into you know, what these needs are of these evaluators and, and newcomers. Um, and some of our first work before you know, we really got into the research, we just said, okay, what can we do quickly? What can we iterate on fast? So there's, uh, there is a brand for Drupal that exists, 
There is a one pager that exists about why you should use Drupal. Um, there is a pitch deck that exists that we've created. And all of this stuff is available uh, if you want to use your phone and use the QR code, you can, you can grab the link. There's a Google Drive where you can download all of these resources. So our first kind of iteration of Promote Drupal was all about just, okay, what can we provide agencies that's actually Drupal branded? So the, the thing that kind of links these, these projects, is also a video up there, is that it's not like, here's this one pager that Evolving Web created or that Acquia created or that your agency created. It's like, what is there that's just Drupal branded about why you should use Drupal? So this was our first kind of iteration of Promote Drupal, was just putting together some of these missing resources. Um, we also realized that we needed to get more research to see what the other missing pieces were. And so a few of the things that we've done, we, we did an evaluator survey pretty early on in the pro process, and we uh, asked a whole bunch of people who said that they were eval responsible for evaluating different platforms and CMSs, we asked them, you know, how do you make this decision? What are the biggest criteria? What challenges are you facing? Um, so we got some, you know, raw information there. Um, it's always challenging to get people who aren't really insider Drupals to respond to these things, so I'm proud that we were able to get some input from outsiders as well and people using other, other CMSs. Um, then we went through and kind of did a segmentation of what, who we considered evaluators and thought about what are the needs of each group. So I'm showing you a lot of spreadsheets here because a lot of marketing work is like doing the research, um, assessing the, the data we have. Um, and so a lot of work has already been done in this area of kind of um, going out there and figuring out who we're talking to. Um, and the other thing we looked at was the analytics of Drupal.org. So who here has looked at analytics of Drupal.org? Maybe you've looked, I know some people have looked at a sneak peek, the, the event organizers have looked at maybe the data for that events page, but we looked at um, it from the perspective of who is um, coming to Drupal.org for the first time. So we tried to use that filter in terms of the data to see how newcomers were using Drupal.org and what pages they were going to most often. And I don't think we had a huge surprise. You know, there's certain pages that are clearly targeted at newcomers, information about Drupal 9, at the time we did this was popular, uh, the download page, <laughs> uh, there's pages for marketers, for developers. So we were looking at those pages to see if we wanna start you know, improving Drupal.org, what pages should we target? Which ones are the most important? Um, and so this, is, this has helped us in our work as well. Um, and another piece that we put together early on just as a draft was a governance plan. Uh, because one thing we really saw is that Drupal.org is such an important resource for newcomers to Drupal, but who's responsible for it? You know, we have the Drupal Association that's clearly responsible for a lot of Drupal.org, but there's also other people responsible for, you know, adding case studies and, um, you know, specific people at the association who update information about um, the mar in the marketplace and things like that. So we were just trying to figure out who's responsible for what and who has the mandate to improve each piece of content. So this is another building block that we have. Um, and in the meantime, uh, a call for proposals was put out by the Drupal Association to ask uh, for um, agencies to redo Drupal. Uh, or not redo Drupal.org, but basically to take the marketing part of Drupal.org and to redesign it. And how many of you have heard of the GitLab uh, work that's being done on Drupal.org? Maybe some of you are really excited about this to improve the whole um, contributor experience, developer experience. Um, we're really excited about it, not just because it's going to improve that experience, but also because it's going to free up Drupal.org to do a better job of being a marketing tool. And so this is a great opportunity to say, how can we just really focus on the external audiences um, and make sure that we're doing a good job serving them? Um, and so I'm, I'll show you a little sneak preview. So the uh, Third and Grove agency worked on a redesign, an initial redesign, uh, to redesign a few pages and uh, basically create some documentation around some uh, components. And so they created 
this, which you should all look up from your laptops now. This is your cue. This is a little video here. You can see, like, imagine you go to drupal.org, and this is what it looks like. So the plan is to launch something like this for uh, by DrupalCon Lille. Um, and you can see, though, that there is some, if you look hard, for those of you who have looked up at the start, you'll see that there was some lorem ipsum you might have seen. <laughs> this is a home page, but not every page is built out. Um, and you know, some, I'm guessing some people in this room might have worked on a website redesign project before. Anyone here worked on a website redesign project? <laughs> So one of the things you might have noticed in your projects is that there's this um, work that has to be done between somebody coming and redesigning a site and coming up with mockups for a collection of five or six pages, and then um, an, an organization like the Drupal Association, which has a staff of, I'm guessing, about 15 people, more or less. Um, and then like who fills in the blanks? Drupal.org is this huge website. It does have a lot of content, even if we are scaling it back to some degree and only you know, applying the redesign to some of the content. But still, there's so much work left to do to uh, write the content and uh, create the, the wireframes and, and, um, or mockups for the rest of the pages to document you know, what are all these components for um, and how can we best use them, especially for those targeted pages I talked about with the analytics. Um, so if we really want to do a better job of you know, competing with other products and having um, really good information on Drupal.org about benefits and, about, uh, the, and, and to have a really good user journey for the evaluators um, to, to walk them through and help them be onboarded into what they need to know about Drupal early on, like we really need to do a lot more work. And so this is the role of Promote Drupal is to kind of fill this gap between um, what um, an agency has been paid to do to, to do a, a redesign and the actual um, uh, implementation work, which is planned to be done, I believe, by the Drupal Association, but uh, perhaps that's, that's TBD as well. Um, so just to give you a... Whoop, to give you an idea, um, so some members of Promote Drupal are designers. They work in Figma, and so they've been um, really productive in building out a few more of the pages that we had uh, that we had planned. So pages like like this one, pages like the downloads page that we didn't have a design for, um, and so we've done work to extend that design work in Figma and have a few more pages built out. And so we've been looking at what components are available in the redesign and what kind of content we want to put forward on those pages. Um, the other thing we've been doing is looking at the menu on Drupal.org. So if you've used, well, it sounds like almost all of you have used Drupal.org in the last week, so you might have looked at the menu or just you know gone to a page and probably ignored it. Um, but there's quite a bit of content in there. Um, and in this new design, there is a new navigation proposed. And so part of our work has been to go through this new sitemap and to really assess whether it, it meets the needs of evaluators, whether the terminology makes sense. Um, we have language in here like uh, contribute, which maybe isn't going to resonate with new users or new, uh, new users, but also people just you know trying to grasp what Drupal is. Um, and so Updating this site map is also part of our, our work. Updating it, providing suggestions, and uh, re yeah, replacing the lore mipsum with more meaningful text. So a lot of work to do here. Um, and one of the things that we are planning to do as part of this is to do some usability testing. So we have, um, we have volunteers on our team who are uh, really passionate about that, and I think a really good next step is going to be to take some of our redesigned pages and put them through usability testing in terms of do they you know line up well with the user journey? Is our site map making sense? Is our the language we're using making sense? Um, so that's part of what we've been working on in terms of the redesign. Now at the same time, just to introduce uh, to introduce Sean here, we realize that there's this work done to redesign Drupal.org. But 
just creating, um, for those of you who work in, I don't know if any of you work in web development or web design, some of you here, yes, yes, hands up, I wanna make sure people are still awake. Yeah, so you might know that, you know, creating a few um, pages in a design and documenting components, um, it's not quite the same as having a brand. And the brand that we've been working with for Drupal um, is one thing. And this design introduces a whole new language, really exciting, lots of new visual components, um, and also some new text. But we want to make sure that this all fits together into a bigger brand strategy, and that things like this pitch deck can also look amazing, and that everything we produce about Drupal can, can, can look great and sound great and really respond to, to the needs and the, the brand. So Sean is going to talk about some of the work he's been kicking off for that. Thank you, Suzanne, and hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sean Parrott. I am the director of brand and creative um, over at Acquia, and also a recent new member of the Promote Drupal Evaluators Committee. Like Suzanne mentioned, I've been working with her and uh, other team members to really help unpack the brand and kind of take a step back and figure out who we are, why we exist, um, how do we want our users to feel, just all of that classic brand foundation stuff. So as we evolve the evolution of the proof of concept of the website and all the other go-to-market materials that we really have a solid um, base and solid foundation uh, to stand on. So really, I want to start with what's the definition of a brand strategy? Um, you have this brand book, right, the brand standards that we all know, and those are there for brand governance and making sure that everyone looks and feels and walks and talks the same way as a brand, and it's really important um, for the governance, but it's really more than color palettes and typefaces and, and photography, right? It, it has to be really based on a, a really strong why, a really strong purpose, a really strong um, brand essence. So that's been my focus. Um, it's really been a lot of fun. Um, it allows me to be a contributor to the community um, from a brand perspective. And I started by putting together this framework uh, this is a framework we used at Acquia for our recent rebrand. I've used this for several other tech companies in the past, but this is all based on kind of a three-layered approach. So we start from the bottom up with brand discovery, then we go to brand strategy, and then we go to brand expression. And you can see a lot of the building blocks here that are, that are laddering up to these various phases. So we've been focusing mostly on the brand discovery phase, which has been more qualitative research. Um, Suzanne's already shared some of the great survey results, but I've been asking kind of more creative brand discovery questions to a lot of folks, and I wanted to share um, some of those findings today. But before that, uh, we put together these 10 winning aspirations that are really intended to be guide rails of sorts, so we make sure that we're pressure testing our work um, as we come up with things, and you know we're, we're really shaping things um, properly so that we don't get off course. So uh, this is sort of the top 10. So number one, don't be a boring business. Uh, number two, demonstrate product benefits in surprising ways, right? And this is something great for all of you as agency owners, um, I, I think, as well. Um, number three, catch people off guard. Number four, target insightfully. Number five, uh, get creative with direct marketing. And to round out the final five, activate the community, uh, lead thought, be surprising and original, champion a purpose or cause, and do something everyone can be a part of. So th th these are things we're reaching for. Um, um, these are aspirations, and we really want the brand to kind of you know, reach higher and ladder up to these things um, as we move forward with the next evolution of the brand. So I want to share some of the creative questions we used um, in our brand research. But before I share the findings, I wanted to ask um, any of you in the audience um, if you have an answer to these questions. Um, so number one, if Drupal were an object, uh, what would it be? Does anybody have an off-the-cuff answer to that? Yeah? Swiss Army knife. That's a great one. Very popular answer. It can do a lot of things. It's flexible. And we ask these questions to use these metaphors and analogies to really kind of unearth these good nuggets when people aren't really thinking about it directly. They're just sort of speaking from the heart. And we take that and we use that to shape future messaging. So Swiss Army knife is a great one. Uh, we had a lot of answers to this question, but I wanted to share just three. Um, that have sort of a commonality. So from left to right, we have the Rubik's Cube, the kettlebell, and a power saw, right? So what do all of these have in common, right? 
in the wrong hands, people can screw it up. A lot of people can play with a Rubik's Cube, but solving it's another story, right? The kettlebell can look a little daunting. Nobody wants to go to the gym, and the last thing you want to do is pick up the kettlebell. But if you do, and you train, you get stronger, and you build that muscle mass, and then over time, it feels lighter. And then finally, the power saw. You don't want somebody picking this up if they don't know how to use it. But if they do, you can cut really precisely, right? So if you look at all three of these things, it kind of feels like Drupal, right? And one thing we can do is say, oh, well, yeah, we're going to apologize the fact that Drupal's hard to use, right? Or we could turn the whole thing on its ear and just say, yeah, Drupal isn't easy. Like, it's for trained professionals, and that's okay, right? So maybe that's a message moving forward. Maybe this is the place to come where when you wear that Drupal badge, like, you're a professional. We're all climbing the mountain together. You know, Drupal can be that 262 mile marker sticker on the back of the SUV. Why do people run? It kills their knees, but they do it because they want to reach higher. They want to really kind of meet those goals. All right, next question. If Drupal were an animal, what would it be? Anyone have that? Yes. An elephant. Why an elephant? Because they have a good memory and they have a lot in their brain. That's good. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, it changes a lot in upgrades? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yes, you. Why a jackalope? Nice. I love the range, yes. Yeah, why a raccoon? Yeah, that's good. So you see, the answer is really adaptable, but it took the animal to get to that, right? It took the Pokemon to get to the upgrade. So that's, that's why we ask these questions. So I'll share with you uh, some of the findings um, from the previous group that I asked this to. Um, so from left to right, we have the octopus, a community of ants, and a whale. The octopus is very flexible. You have all these tentacles. It's doing all these things simultaneously. They're really smart. They're flexible. Um, community of ants, that's why we're here, right? The community, we're all working together to, to solve common problems and common goals. And then the whale, it's really big, and it can be a little bit scary but it's also one of the strongest, most powerful creatures in the ocean, right? So we have to find a way to take that whale and package it in a way and go to market and, and just make it approachable because it is strong and, you know, it's, it's very powerful. All right, next question. If Drupal were a person, who would it be? Anyone have this? It would be Dries. That's good. That's good. Anyone else? All right, well, I will show the findings here. Um, we have the Incredibles, right? Because this is a community of people with individual superpowers. So really fun, kind of playful tone to that. Uh, this middle one's interesting. Um, someone said an older Batman, right? Like, it's been around for a while. It's heroic, but can it still save the day? Right, so that's part of our job as marketers to repackage that older Batman and say, yeah, it can save the day, and it has 20 years of knowledge to do that, and it, it's going to work smarter. And then finally, a hockey goalie, right? Not pretty, but extremely secure and protective, and not a lot of competitors can compete with that, right? So we're all telling that security and protection message, but are we talking to the right audience at the right time with the right message? So that's something we're, we're exploring there um, as an ownable message. Okay, additional findings. I'm just gonna share some poll quotes from the survey um, and the interviews. Drupal is worth it, you get out what you put in. There are haters that aren't able to make this climb. You need to be a professional, this is not a side gig. Drupal is not a hobby. So again, you can see this message kind of bubbling up about how this is for professionals. And maybe you know we take sort of a Nike vibe with this thing and we recruit young people out of college and it's like, hey, you have to work for this, but if you earn it, you can be an ambitious site builder and you can do anything. So that's, that's a different message. And finally, I'm still using Drupal because I need to be able to say yes to a lot of different things, and I know that I can bend Drupal to a future business need that's unknown to me. There might be agency owners out there, it's like, oh yeah, you know, Drupal is frustrating sometimes, but there are marketers and there are board members at companies that make these decisions who 
don't really know enough about the tech stack, but Drupal allows you to flex and bend that to a future need and see around corners, and that's, that's huge. Okay, so additional findings that came out of this, we sort of just put forth some creative territories. These are not ways we're gonna message per se, but these are springboards we're using as the team continues to ideate and develop um, this project. So the first one, this whole idea of artisan code you know, you have the whole craft movement, right? There's craft everything now. There's craft coffee, there's craft beer, ice cream, socks, I mean, you name it. But Drupal is really this sort of interesting place as a developer, especially where tactile meets digital, and, and, and you're really sort of handcrafting this code and people care and they solve these problems and it's a good feeling and then you put that code back into the community and you watch it grow. So I, I really like this artisan vibe um, that, that came forth out of the discovery. Also, Drupal is battle-tested. It's been out on a winter's night. It's been there for over two decades. For those of you who are Game of Thrones fans, it's sort of the Jon Snow of CMSs, right? It, it really, it gets the job done under any condition. And then get your black belt in coding. You know, this is again, comes back to this whole athletic, let's climb this thing together. These are the athletes of the basement, you know, after hours, under the glow of the monitor, like you have to be really good. And then once you are, you can, you can do anything. So you're seeing some similarities come out here in, in, in different ways. So let's talk about the marketer, right? Because the marketer is making more decisions now and we will never ignore the developer. We will always wanna to talk to the developer, but marketers don't have deep technical knowledge. And if they're making decisions and they're not talking to the right CTO or the secret CTO, as I call it, the developer that's sort of influencing the CTO, they can make the wrong choice. So I think we're all responsible as marketers and as a community to make sure that we're sort of Rosetta stoning this and being good translators to the marketer and packaging this message in a right way where we're communicating the value and making them understand the why. And then finally, the power of many. Let's go back to the community here for a moment. Um, I don't know if any of you have read that book by Simon Sinek called An Infinite Game really good. Um, I recommend it. I'm reading it right now. But he talks about this, these groups of people that are playing for a just cause. It's not about winning and losing. It's about playing because you want to play the game and you want to keep going. And because of that, you win. So I, I think about the Drupal community a lot as I'm sort of thumbing through these pages. And it's all about being part of something that's bigger than yourselves. Okay, so we have to take all of this fun and, and package it in a way in the end that goes back to that brand book, those brand standards. So through all the research, we came across these five brand attributes. The fact that Drupal is flexible, it's ambitious, it's open, it's powerful, and it's secure. So these aren't necessarily, you know, customer facing words on the website or anything like that. These are just these five tenets that we wanna make sure all of our go to market materials, everything we're doing align to these five traits um, or attributes. And then finally, what does next look like? So we're gonna keep going on this and we have uh, a big goal of at DrupalCon Lille kind of rolling out the next iteration of this. What is the next iteration of the brand look like? Not only on the website, but the brand book, the, the future DrupalCon graphics. How do, how do we modernize this? How do we take the greatness of the community but also start to bring in other folks and just slowly continue um, to evolve that brand. So this schedule is sort of representative of that. And with that, I will turn it back over to Suzanne. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. And what I really like about all this, um, this brand work is that it really shows this confidence that doesn't necessarily come out now um, when we look at Drupal marketing materials. And I'm really excited about having um, having a brand that we can rely on in this way. Um, I just wanted to mention one other uh, committee. We've been talking about the work of the Promote Drupal Evaluators Committee um, over the whole course of this presentation. Um, but there's also another committee working on PR material and social media um, content for Drupal, again, coming from Drupal itself. and. Um, we're focusing on making sure we have press releases, guest blog posts on interesting publications like Splat, 
Smashing Magazine um, and um, LinkedIn posts consistently coming out from the Drupal account. Um, and there's been work done on this globally, actually. The newspaper article you see here um, as an example. Um, and so it's really just to, cr to have a committee to create a calendar around this so that we can really work together and have a united effort to spread the word about Drupal beyond um, the Drupal community and indeed beyond Drupal.org. Um, so this is a place to get involved. So I'm going to talk about other ways to get involved, but if you're interested specifically in um, writing, this could be a great area for you to help out uh, if you have a few hours um, a month, then it's actually a, a great opportunity. Um, so what's next? Uh, I don't know how many of you were um, at the pre Dries note um, or at, at the Dries note, I guess, on time. <laughs> um, but you might have heard about the Drupal Association strategic plan. And one of their objectives is, uh, is to develop and adopt a marketing plan. And Promote Drupal is part of that. So if you heard about that and that got you excited and you want to get involved and contribute, Promote Drupal is is the way that you can contribute. We're going to be working, um, I hope, very closely with the Drupal Association on this to uh, create this marketing plan and then also to roll it out with some of these things we've been developing, the brand, the redesign work, et cetera. Um, so I think it's a really good time uh, for Promote Drupal because there's been um, always you know, some hesitation, I think. We, we create new assets. We work on things. Um, and then we don't necessarily know if we have permission to go ahead and update Drupal.org or to link to these things heavily. Um, and so I hope that working more closely with the Drupal Association will give us this confidence as well. Um, and so I have a few things that you can do to help if this all sounds exciting to you and you think, yeah, we want Drupal to compete as a product uh, against its competitors more effectively. Um, so I have three things you can do to help in increasing degrees of commitment. <laughs> so if you want to help out just a bit today and you're just looking for like, what's one thing I can do? Um, you can go to this QR code. I'm sorry I didn't put the link. I thought I had the link there. Um, but um, you can go and uh, there's a spreadsheet I have here of content for the new redesign of Drupal.org, so it's our sitemap. And we're looking for feedback on that sitemap, um, feedback on whether that content makes sense, and um, I'd love to know what you think. So if you just have a chance to, to glance and chat with me about it, that would be an easy way to give a small amount of um, input and would be super helpful. Um, if you want to give a little bit more uh, help, <laughs> uh, I assume people here are on Drupal Slack. A anybody not on Drupal Slack and need help? Because I'd love to help you get on Drupal Slack. Anyone want help doing that? Anyway, if you want help getting on Drupal Slack, anyone here will be able to help you. Um, so if you are interested in participating in some usability testing for those new pages, um, it would be great. It would be even better if you had like a friend who's you know, interested in um, different uh, CMSs and different web platforms um, <laughs> who wants to help, who's not so into Drupal, but uh, anyone um, can participate. Uh, and you can reach out to Emma Horrell on Drupal Slack to let her know you'd like to be involved. So that's like a little bit bigger commitment, but uh, not, not too much. Um, and then if you're really excited about this, you want to do some writing of, of press releases or LinkedIn posts, you want to help us out with this uh, redesign project or with the brand work, um, or if you're a designer and you have time to give and you know Figma and you, you want to help out in that way, you know, this is a great way for people who are, you know, not non-coders to contribute. Um, and so we'd love to have you on one of the committees. So feel free to email me. You can also reach out to me on Drupal Slack. My, my um, handle is Pixelite. Um, and let's just see how much time. Oh, I have like five, six minutes. So um, I would just 
pause here to say that, um, you know, of course, Drupal has this long tradition of contribution, right? We have, um, I think Dries mentioned the number of core committers earlier this week. It's something like 12 core committers. We have a whole process around people contributing code to Drupal. Um, and there's also lots of ways, of course, to contribute in other ways to the Drupal project and to make Drupal as a product better. But I found that it's been challenging to get the same momentum around contribution to marketing and content efforts. Um, and I think it's in part because of uh, governance because it's hard to know like what do I have permission to do um, what voice do I use um, what kind of like are the brand guidelines sufficient to create marketing content and then even just do I have permission to update this landing page on drupal.org and make it better um, and so we've had some challenges I think because uh, promote Drupal has been around a little while and it's taken us a while to get here. But I also think we've laid a lot of the groundwork behind the scenes. You've seen like we've done, we've done research, we've um, created some you know, initial marketing materials to see how those get used. Um, we've talked to a lot of people um, and now we have a great team and I think we're ready to really take it to the next level, but we need to keep the momentum and we need more uh, volunteers and more more contributors who have time to dedicate um, so I gave you kind of the three options for how to contribute if we had a few more uh, people on our committee who had hours every month to um, to really dedicate I think it would go a long way um, and uh, that's it so I'd love to get um, uh, yeah I'd like to hear your feedback and your questions you can clap if you want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so I believe the plan is to have the brand strategy work done. And along with that, we hope to have some version of the redesign for Drupal.org. Now that might look like um, just a few pages. It might not be everything. Maybe it will be the top level pages and the navigation. Um, I think it would be hard. It will be hard to draw that line of what gets redesigned and what doesn't, but um, the plan is to have some version of that launched. Good to have deadlines. Other questions or comments? Yes. One of the comments, um, as a techie, I kind of went to a really um, tough learning curve for the tech people is to make sure clients really care about what they're doing and make it actually um, pretty quick and, and definite in some of the research and studies. So, you know, I, I'm not always um, like in the real popular space to make sure people want to make sure they care. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so uh, it was a comment about the about the um, the brand strategy work and how it's very fun and uh, and how this appeals a lot to developer audience as well. That's great. Yeah. So up until a few years ago, like the Drupal Association didn't have any marketing staff, as far as I know. Um, and now there is a marketing, I think, Christina's role is marketing coordinator, marketing, marketing manager. Um, and so, um, but it also takes effort to market DrupalCon. So there's been um, just, le there's just like nobody's, full-time job to do it. And it's hard to do marketing well when there's nobody's full-time job to do it. So um, I think 
I know the current version of Drupal.org, there was a redesign project where an agency was hired and there was work done around UX and that type of thing. Um, but in terms of a more broad marketing plan, marketing strategy, I don't think that that work was, was done per se. So it just like, there's a void. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great comment. So about the PR, like having something in TechCrunch about an update for Drupal would be awesome. One thing we have already done on that committee, just so you, because I didn't talk much about it, is that we did create like a set of um, themes that it would be great to have content about. And we created a database of publications that we want to get content into. Um, and then for the social media efforts, we have like different um, topics for people to post on like um, you know case studies on certain days more um, benefits of Drupal on other days so like we have created some framework for that but I think we're really just missing the the volume of writers and editors to make it happen because it does take time to do that well yeah Great, yeah, so question about fundraising because you know it costs money to pay writers and <laughs> do marketing. Um, it is the uh, like the third uh, strategic objective of the Drupal Association is fundraising. Um, and so by doing um, you know by doing a better job of marketing Drupal, I think we're also helping Drupal, be what better position to get fun to get fundraising to get money for these things um, but also of course we as agencies uh, I say we I know a lot of you work for agencies <laughs> agencies all benefit from marketing Drupal as a product I mean if I write in a proposal hey I propose Drupal and somebody Googles Drupal and they come across poor marketing material and then they Google um, Adobe Experience Manager and they see something better, they're likely to be swayed by that. So it benefits a lot of us to, um, to market Drupal better. Um, and so just, it's, it's been always an issue of just getting the resource, getting enough resources from all the agencies together. Um, so in terms of fundraising, I mean, I think part of it could also be making sure that we have, um, you know, money from supporting partners, money from um, Drupal certified partners kind of earmarked for this effort. And I think as we show progress, like we show, oh, we have a new design for the homepage of drupal.org, then people will be convinced by that and see the, the impact and want to contribute more. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think that, oh, sorry, I repeat. There has no, been no call to action for fundraising for this since the initial Promote Drupal was launched, I think, in DrupalCon Nashville. So it's been quite a while since then. I don't think there's been any other call to action to fundraise. So that could be something to do. Yeah, let's, let's get started. Uh, so please, if you have any interest at all in getting involved, don't hesitate, come talk to me. Um, I would love to chat with you more. Um, and thanks a lot for hearing us out and spread the word. Please tell your colleagues about Promote Drupal and um, let others know what's going on. Will you be here this afternoon? Yes, I will be around this afternoon. <laughs>